All right, so we're here with Muhammad, um, who authored uh, Math in Another Universe. Welcome to uh, welcome to the stream. Hi, everyone. So, um, can you summarize your problem and kind of its its solution? So, the problem is kind of it have a simple concept, which is um, in ma so in math we have multiplication, division, the order of operations, multiplication, division, and then uh, plus and minus, and everyone is used to that. Uh, what it, the problem solving the the fact that we have to prioritize uh, multiplication division can be a little bit tricky in programming, but we already have libraries to do all of this. So uh, I thought, why not try uh, like to force students through the process without using libraries? And they came up with the idea of like using uh, plus and minus instead of uh, like prioritizing plus and minus instead of uh, multiplication division. And I think it went very well. Yeah, I, I do as well. I think it's uh, held up as a pretty solid problem throughout this entire competition. We have 16 solves so far, uh, which is which is really uh, pretty. And only 33% of sub submissions have been correct. So there's a lot of um, a lot of uh, danger in that problem. Um, How many teams do you think will solve this problem before the end of the competition? Well. Uh... Honestly, I thought I thought by the end of the problem, uh, I mean by the end of the competition, there will be only like maybe five teams. I was really surprised to see this many teams solve the problem so far. <laughs> I think we were all surprised by how many teams have solved the problems. I mean, we would definitely were not expecting to have the the podium set before the one hour mark uh, or one hour of time remaining. So, um, yeah, I think you know what what. Uh, you, you kind of mentioned that you were looking for something that would be a little bit difficult, um, a little bit more involved, and you, you would be forced to, to do something clever. Um, what was, did you have a specific inspiration for this problem? Uh, well, I, so I think last summer uh, I was working on uh, an app. I was trying to make a game with uh, some math problems, and uh, uh, in my game, I had to work with uh, factorials and stuff that are not available. Like it, by default, in most uh, math libraries, they are not there uh, to solve like factorials and stuff in one math string. So I had to like write the thing on my own, and uh, I mostly used the uh, jigs and stuff to solve it. And uh, it was a it was a nice challenge, like trying to figure things out and prioritizing things, especially when there were parentheses. And uh, that's kind of how I came up with the idea. Did I answer the question right, or did I miss it? No, that's that that's a uh, that's really great. Um, I think um, I think it's really interesting, like how these problems get developed. You know, kind of just projects that we're working on, or um, kind of things that we see in our rooms or whatever. It's a very it's very um, mm -hmm. very cool to to know where these problems come from. So I guess what um, what approaches do you expect uh, teams to use, and and where where do you think they're gonna be tripped up? Well, uh, for the, when I was making the problem, I tried to make sure that uh, there aren't very like uh, tricky things, or, like hidden stuff that people need to think of in advance, uh, such as the uh, negatives and subtractions. So uh, there shouldn't be stuff that were too tricky, uh, but I expect people like to fall uh, like a victim of just having one for loop to solve the whole problem, while uh, they're, they're they're expected to kind of have two different for loops to finish the plus and minus and then the multiplication the division. So I will I would definitely expect the normal way of solving the problem, which is just uh, two for loops. And uh, yeah, the first for loop will solve the each plus and minus, and the second for loop will solve each uh, multiplication division. So we have a, a submission here that uh, surprised us and, and probably will surprise you as well. Um, this is um, from Fellowship of the String. They were first to solve, they solved this problem at 34 minutes into the competition. Um, they were uh, pretty fast. Um, 
this was their submission. <laughs> and it has, uh, looks like we lost Muhammad. Uh, let me let me check to see if he's here. He's still on the call. He just is. Looks like webcam and microphone went out. We'll hop over to the scoreboard real quick while we get him back. Um, looks like there has been some movement at the top. Lobos two has overtaken Cherry Creek Camel Casers. Um, they both now just need to solve K and as, as you predicted K is going to be the determining factor for fourth and fifth place it looks like. Lions is interesting because they, they've at least taken a crack at every problem but they have two missed solutions now that may that I think there awesome. still might be a chance they can get a they can probably beat Cherry Creek because Cherry Creek has that one problem with four missed submissions but it's going to be a close thing. Absolutely. It's uh, it's going to be a definite nail biter. Oh, we have yeah. Mohammed back. We'll hop we have back, back. To, to this. This is the worst time for my internet to cut out. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. My internet cut out like right before the stream started, so we missed uh, a bit of Tracy Camp's uh, uh, introduction. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, we're, we were looking at this solution from Fellowship of the String, the first team to solve problem L. Um, what do you make of this? Well, I feel kind of destroyed. Like they, they did it with one line. <laughs> they they didn't even bother like uh, take the input in a different line. They just like completely destroyed the problem. <laughs> yeah, this looks like a code golf solution to this problem. I I think that any any code golfer would be very proud of this solution. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess what what do you uh, do? You mind explaining you know how this is working? Like it looks fairly fairly ridiculous. Uh, it seems like they've added parentheses like between each imp input. So uh, like uh, the things that they want to prioritize, they add parentheses for. And then uh, they use the evaluate function of Python to solve it, which is uh, really interesting. I really didn't see that coming. Like I didn't think of, I didn't have the thought of like adding parentheses for we just uh, help the problem be solved in one in one loop. Yeah, so it they looks also like... didn't use a loop. They just used one Python line. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like it looks like they're basically just, um, <laughs> yeah, just adding the parentheses around the addition and subtraction, which is kind of which is kind yeah. of funny. And it, it, the 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 nice thing about the input format is there's spaces between all of the tokens so you don't have to worry about any of that which makes this approach uh workable um yeah we all thought it was we all thought it was very clever using uh you know just changing order of operations in order to prevent people from just evaling the input and <laughs> so just evaling the input and it's kind of this, <sighs> another funny thing is this problem is uh almost identical to an advent of code problem this year and that was just a co total coincidence um, but mm -hmm. I think it was problem on the day 22 or something of Advent of Code, somewhere around there, uh, which I thought was fairly amusing. Um, There's one way to kind of defeat their approach. I'm not sure if it will completely defeat their approach. Uh, when I was making the problem, I thought of adding parentheses, but I thought it might be very, kind of difficult for high school students. Yeah, we had a problem last and, uh, year that involved parentheses. It was tax calc, and that was uh, that one mm -hmm. was, I think, the second hardest in the competition last year. So, so definitely would have been a stretch. But looking at the teams this year, it may not have been actually that much of a stretch. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to look at another submission as well. So this is um, let's actually get it. Uh, l let's look at the correct submission. So this is a correct submission from River Hill High School Team 2. This is a team that had a lot of trouble. They had seven wrong submissions before a correct submission on this problem. Um, and it looks like... So this is a diff. It looks like it's just a little bit of a, a change here. What do you, what do you see in the submission? Uh, any... It seems fairly opaque to me. I'm not sure what to make of it. It's kind of hard to read. So 
first of all, I don't blame the competitors uh, trying to write code as fast as possible and not focusing on uh, like uh, trying to organize it or make it very readable because uh, it is a competition. It's uh, like time is a key in many of these problems. So what I'm what I'm seeing here, I'm looking for. Hmm. Yeah, this use of all of this logic inside the while loop is bizarre. <laughs> so yeah. there's an N, and then there's this large logic. What is I don't understand is or? what I'm thinking. What they may be doing here is doing. So there's an uh, it's a it's the shipyard or something like that algorithm. Um, where mm -hmm. basically you, you convert an infix mm -hmm. notation into a prefix. But I think maybe that's what they're doing. Because then they're, see, doing, uh, e they're using eval at the very end to, to do the, the pops uh, on mm -hmm. the operation. It's interesting how teams will try to like reformat the problem to be able to use uh, eval to evaluate. Like... Uh, Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, it looks like they're basically, so the there's this operator stack. So there's a stack, I see some pop action in the pending. Yeah, I think they're using the shunting and, yard uh, algorithm. At the very end, at the very end, I see a string in which, uh, where the calculation happened in the eval. Uh, they do, they do kind of, can you scroll down in their code? What is really hilarious there is they're using try except to test if like it's an integer or an operator. <laughs> hey, I mean it works. Which is so lazy and glorious. <laughs> I love it. So the if the evaluation the they added the word thing, I think they're referring to I'm not sure what they're referring to exactly. Are they uh, did they convert the plus minus multiplication thingy? You know what it is? What is it? I think they're converting it into like a stack based programming language. I think so too. Like I'm pretty sure let me just pull mm -hmm. up this um, see if I can move it. Uh, oh dear. I3 is getting Yeah, they're way. they're totally converting into a I stack. I think they're using the shunting yard algorithm hilarious. which is a a method for converting infix into pre uh, RPN. So basically the idea of this algorithm is that you have an operator stack, um, and then you you pull in your operators. Let me see if I can zoom in here. You pull in your operators um, into a stack, and depending on precedence, you pop them out at various times, and then you you shove all of your non-operators across to the other side. Um, uh, that does look sort of like the fact And I think this is what they're doing, which is allowing them to basically solve this problem. I've never heard of this before. The fact that a high school student came <laughs> me up with neither. this is awesome to me. Uh, I saw this. I didn't hear about this until I failed miserably at the advent of code problem um, and then and then looked this up. Um, I just did a for loop, which is the solution that I think that you were expecting, Muhammad. Yeah, just like two for loops kind of thing, and then uh, mm -hmm. to do the trick. I've seen another interesting solution from one of the developers. Uh, so when we were working the problem, uh, there was one of the developers who tested the problem, and they used a stack. So they kind of converted the the whole uh, math string to a stack, and then uh, popped uh, like popped some values, and then put them back in the stack until. Uh, the problem is solved, which was an interesting approach as well. So there are many ways to solve the problem. And uh, like looking at the submissions of some of the students, uh, I could really say I've learned a lot. <laughs> I've been enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> most definitely, most definitely. Um, yeah, is there anything else that you'd like to, to mention before we let you go? So uh, there, the students this year, well, they did kind of destroy us. I've seen one of the teams like solve all the problems from the first hour and a half. Uh, next year, I have a lot of more difficult problems planned. So uh, hopefully, the the competition will be more challenging. 
Yeah, yeah, you know, it's uh, <laughs> we're definitely going to have to up the the complexity. Um, it's it's very difficult to you know make it so that um, most of the teams can solve at least a few problems. But it does look like all teams have solved at least two, and yeah, has- all but two have solved at least four so that's that's a really good to see i think that's an amazing success here just looking at like how many teams have solved that first four and then also uh f and g as well yeah uh, absolutely absolutely and f and g i think we're definitely the next next easiest problems um in the competition well um i think that's it so Thank you Thanks so much so for much hopping for on, us. Muhammad. Um, Thank you very much. Yeah, have a good one. You too, bye.